Okay, I think I hear sleigh bells coming. Uh, this year, I got, I got a new idea for a uh, really cute, uh, simple uh, ornament for for Christmas this year, uh, well within the range of a, of a novice novice turner. Uh, some of y'all may be familiar with the miniature birds that I've turned for my birdhouse uh, ornaments, and I just it dawned on me I could scale that up and make this this attractive uh, little ornament. So let's get started. What we need, block of wood about one and five eighths inch square, six inches long, screw eye, a little bit of Christmas cord. I prefer a lighter piece of wood. Uh, darker wood tends to get lost in the, uh, in the tree limbs. You can use uh, Green wood, if, as long as it's reasonably dry and it doesn't have the pith in it. This bad for pear, although I only cut it, uh, processed it this month, it's been sitting in a large block for uh, outside for almost four years. So let's get going. Turn it between centers. Then we're going to put a tenon on it to match your particular chuck. to use this uh, 35 millimeter jaws which works great for projects somewhere between an inch and a half to, to two inches if you don't have a small set of jaws just use a, your normal jaws and a larger larger blank of wood to, to turn it down switch to a smaller tool rest So I like to start off with some idea where I'm going with this sketch. So we're going to turn a, the head about uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, about an inch and a half long. So I'm going to take that down with a spindle roughing gouge. And use this wrench to get a size for the three quarter of an inch. Doesn't have to be exact, but gives me a gives me a feel for it. You could, of course, turn the head and the body out of two separate pieces of wood, but I find this a little bit a little bit faster. We're going to turn the head first to kind of reduce the the amount of wood that we're going to have uh, for the for the body so it won't uh, vibrate as much. We've got to take this down just a little bit because we know we're going to have that damage. So let's go ahead and mark that. So I'm going to use a skew to kind of start start shaping that uh, the back of that head where we're going to pour it off. Kind of mark where it's going to be. And I'm going to go ahead and use a spindle gouge to shape that. Now that it, the, the head's going to be about three eighths, inch, uh, three quarters of an inch long, just like it's three quarters of an inch wide. So I'm going to make the beak. I'm going to speed the lathe up a little bit. This is a pretty small turning.
to take it down quickly. Down here with the beating and parting tool. Now I can get the shape just a little bit, a little bit better here. Now I'm going to go ahead and take it down a little bit further here with the parting tool. Eighth inch parting tool gets in there very easily. I want to leave a little bit of support while I finish sanding, so let's go ahead and sand it up a little bit. Okay, I was going to start off with uh, 120 grit. I'm going to put a little bit of sanding lubricant on it to keep the uh, dust down. You know, this is my homemade stuff. Four parts of mineral oil to one part of beeswax by by weight. And this works works great. So lay it down while you sand. And then we hit all the grits. Up to about 240. I think that's fine enough for what we're trying to accomplish here. But you might want to go even finer. And I'm going to put a little abrasive paste on there to get out some of the micro scratches. Part off here at the nose. Back off tail stock, get the speed up just a little bit, and there we go. And let's stroke that with a piece of sandpaper just a little bit here, a couple of grits, and the abrasive paste. Now we can go ahead and cut back on the head. I'm going to use a skew for this since I'm going to go in deep. This is a pretty easy cut. It's a uh, uh, cut off a little edge here. Give myself a little clearance around there.
I've got a little bit of rough area there. I think I can still hit. over and part it off. Don't grab it or you'll rip out some, tear out some of the end grain. Just let it fall into your hand. And there we go. And I got a little, just a little bit of hand sanding to deal with on the end here, but not much. So, there's there's the head. Now let's do the body. The body's going to be a little bit bigger. The diameter of the body is an uh, inch and three eighths. So let me go ahead and set some calipers for that. Although that's not a magic number, it's a number that's pretty close to where we want to be, and we're not too far off of that. So let's go ahead and take it down a little bit more with a spindle roughing gouge. this case I think I'm going to turn the beak in that uh, same direction yeah Whoa. all right yep the beak will be in that direction since I've overshot it just a little bit all right we're going to make this all about two and a half inches long. Let's mark two and a half inches. And that puts us right about here. I'm just going to mark that with a parting cut. I'm not going down very deep because I don't want to reduce the mass here. And of course, the body will be turned around here. That's just for shape. Double check. I know it's thin on this end, but I think it's a little thick on this end. So no, that's just about right on the money. All right. So we want to go ahead and mark it in this direction. So I've got. I can make sure it looks somewhat like a ball. That's going to be the body. And then we'll flare out to the tail. So, we're just going to do a little bulk removal here with a spindle roughing gouge. You may prefer a using a bowl gouge. It's whatever works for you. Start shaping the body in earnest. And we're gonna give ourselves a little clearance room here. But here's really where the end is gonna be. The more beads and balls you turn, the, the better your eye comes on shaping these. marks that reduce the sanding. That's looking pretty good. I think I want to slope it a little bit more gentle. Pick up the cut a little earlier. Continue to cut. Now we're going to get ready to part this off and use a skew. I 
give myself just a bit more clearance here. Get the speed up. And let's see. Make a little V cut here. Make it a little wider. if I can't get it to drop in my hand rather than me chase it across the floor. And there we go. Just the tiniest little little scraps there that I can carve off and easily deal with with a piece of sandpaper. But since I keep a bunch of gem chucks, I'm going to show you how easy it is. I don't know what I turned in this one. Might have been an egg. Might have been uh, something different. So I'm going to put it in there and see if we can't easily size it because it's pretty close to the to the final size we need. Uh, that fits in there pretty snug. So the main thing is I've got to drill a little bigger hole. I'm going to do that with, with a hand drill and see if that'll take care of it. And maybe it will. The trouble about drilling a hole where it's already there, it just gets very aggressive and snatches up. So. that's got it so let's see how this body that should center it nicely and nope it's a little bit loose ah well let's try something I'm gonna take my air hose and see if I can't blow it out because it was awfully loose There we go. So, so I've got to take the front of this down a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do, I think this will, since I've got this handy, I'm just going to come down here to slope, and I think this will take care of it. just need to get wood out of the way I think as a clearance oh yeah so that's nice and snug now I can go ahead and <clears throat> go through the different uh, grits to sand this off if I really wanted to make it smooth which I do so if you use gem chucks you can reuse a lot of them and get a really Good head start. Okay, I took this to release it. it. It stuck. It sticks out a little bit here, so that's no problem. And just pulling it out of the chuck and just tapping it, and and there we go. Now I've got got my two parts, and time to move on to on to a, to assembly. Okay, so it's glue up time. So there's three ways you can actually mount it. You can either sand the, 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 the two matching parts. You can drill holes and use a peg, which is my generally preferred approach. You can uh, also use a Forstner bit to drill a, a hole that the head will seat into, and, and that'll kind of conceal the joint. So those are three different methods. 
uh, just a little glue on it's not likely to hold it a hard use. Now you can use a little cylinder out of uh, a little dowel. I prefer to use a bamboo skewer. I keep a pack of these on hand. They're very, very handy. They're very strong. Uh, first thing I do is to mark the hole with a uh, birdcage awl, which tr actually drills a little hole, and then I come in there and with a small bit that I've already sized uh, to match the bamboo skewer and, and drill appropriate uh, depth hole. If I go a little deep, doesn't doesn't matter as long as I don't come come through. Um, then I kind of orient the two uh, and match the direction of where I need to glue or where I need to drill the next next hole, and then of course again mark that with the with the awl. and drill that hole. You can start the hole one direction and then bend it over. I use these little snips to cut the uh, cut it to appropriate length and, and double check it, dry fit it so to speak, before I, I use uh, a medium CA. I put a little few drops of CA in a Pringles can top and and it makes it easy for me to pick that up, stick it in there, poke it in the uh, uh, one of the parts and then st stick the other one in there and stir it around a little bit to get it on the other end so I don't get it on my hands and then I actually take the head and, and stick it in there and get just get a little bit of glue where the two surfaces are going to come together and then set it aside to dry for a few minutes maybe hit it with accelerator if I'm in a real hurry next thing we're going to do is we're going to get out a screw eye don't get the big big ones locally. You got you got to order those online to get get a really small one for it to look nice. I then mark where I'm going to put the screw eye and and use a pin vise, uh, a tiny little little hand drill, because if you don't, if you try to just twist that thing in there, it's going to snap it off every time. So use a pin vise. You can get these on on Amazon. Uh, you can go through my store. Uh, I'll get a small small commission. And that fingers make it kind of hard, but you can also use a small set of pliers uh, to, to grasp that needle nose, no, needle nose pliers. Orient the uh, screw eye the way you want it in order that the bird will tilt at the appropriate, appropriate angle. Of course, that's to some extent based on you know the center of gravity where you put it. I have this 16th inch cord I get from Hobby Lobby, uh, which works very well when I drill holes through an ornament, but in this case, uh, going through a screw eye, I can use a little larger uh, ribbon that I have on hand. And then ju just do an overhand knot, pull it tight. And then for it to be neat, you gotta trim off the ends, the, the excess. And some of these cord, it's it's wrapped around some softer core and, and tends to not look real well and can unravel a little bit in use. So I tend to just dip it in the uh, the CA glue and let let it dry so it'll be a hardened uh, tip. Then I'm going to hang this on a uh, a rack in order to uh, hit it a, a coat of of spray lacquer. I want to share my passion for wood turning with you with videos that inspire and, and teach. I appreciate any comments you have. Leave them in the comment section underneath the video, video dis description. If you like this, hit the like button. And y'all remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back, you hear?